Yo, what is going on everyone? Mages here. I just wanted to make a really quick video on some ways that you could invest the $600 that you'll be getting for your, from your stimulus check. Now, I know everyone that is watching this video may not be getting the $600 because your parents may claim you as dependents or you may not have had a job yet because you're in college, etc. But uh, assuming that you're getting the $600 stimulus check there uh, and you want to spend it on Pokemon because you don't have other things to spend it on, um, I will be uh, showing you some of the ways that I believe are the best ways to invest it in Pokemon. Now, um, this is dependent on a few factors. Um, I do not recommend spending all 600 on the Pokemon. I do recommend that you uh, set aside some in your savings and you do invest some um, separately. So I would maybe do half and half or, you know, maybe $200 in your savings, 400 on Pokemon or vice versa. But whatever you want to do, however you want to uh, split up your money, that is your decision. But I just wanted to give you some tips on ways that I think would, uh, would best benefit you. Now, my very first tip that I am going to give you guys is to invest in yourself. Now, I think this is the biggest tip that I can give you um, in this video. Uh, so I just wanted to start off with that one, investing in yourself. So this can mean several things. For instance, let's say that you want to open up a business, whether it be Pokemon or something else, you could spend some of this money opening up a LLC or a company. Um, it's usually about like $100, uh, maybe like $150, depending on where you live, etc. So you could use some of that money to open up a LLC with opening up a LLC or any other type of company that you want to open. Um, you will be able to buy uh, Pokemon products or whatever Pokemon or whatever products you want to buy. It doesn't have to be Pokemon per se, but you'll be able to buy Pokemon cards straight from uh, the warehouses. I, I don't know the specific term for it, but you'll be able to buy it from the middlemen. So, you know, Pokemon sends it to the warehouses and then you buy them from the warehouses. So you will be getting uh, the Pokemon cards, you know, roughly at retail price or maybe even a little bit lower. And with that, you can open up a very, very small Pokemon store. Um, you could obviously open up a bigger store, you know, if you have, if you're throwing in extra money of your own. Um, I don't think $600 is going to be enough to just open up a store alone, but it is going to help you uh, greatly just by getting the LLC and being able to get the Pokemon cards at a lower cost. Um, now, along with all that, um, what is really huge right now are these rip and ships now i don't i'm not a huge fan of the rip and ships but they are doing extremely well right now so this would be another type of way of investing your money so you could spend your six hundred dollars well five you could spend a hundred dollars get your llc open and you know spend like five hundred dollars on pokemon boxes or you know again you can spend more money than that you know depending on how much you have but it will be uh, you know, beneficial to you to however much money you spend. So you can just buy Pokemon packs, Vivid Voltage, Unified Minds, Darkness Ablaze, Champion's Path, uh, et cetera, and do these rip and ships, guys. I'm telling you, they are making bank. A lot of these guys have been selling, for instance, let's say, uh, let's say Vivid Voltage. They are selling them usually for about $6 a pack or... I've seen uh, booster box uh, ETBs going for about $55. Now, retail, you can get an ETB for about $40, I believe, at $39.99. So you have that. And then let's say you buy it for $39.99 retail if you're lucky enough to get it at retail. And then you turn right around and you're selling it on, um, on your rip and ship for $55. You've already made $15 profit off of a one ETB. Not to mention, a lot of people only send um, the um, the hits out of the box. So then you are getting to keep all of the bulk, which is also insane. And some people, whenever they don't even get a good hit, they just tell the people just to keep the, the hits if they don't even get any good hits that they want. So I have actually seen several rip and ships where people just like don't even want the cards that they got out of the ETB. So you made $55 and you get to keep all the cards. Now, bulk adds up over time very quickly. So about 3,000 bulk will buy you a, a, a booster box. So that's 36 more packs that you get for free. And then you're getting $6 per pack for each of those. So that's another like $180 that you just got just by keeping the bulk. Guys, I'm telling you, 
Ribbon ships are insane right now. You make money off of each booster pack. You make money off of the bulk. You make money off of the booster packs that you get from the bulk. It's insane profit right now. So that is definitely one way, another way that I recommend, um, you know, investing in Pokemon if you want to do it. So there are two ways. The first way was opening up a business. Um, and you know, that, that, that doesn't have to be ripping ships. That could be any type of business that could just be buying and buying ETBs at retail and reselling for more than retail, because you should get them a little bit cheaper than retail. If you're buying from the, uh, the, uh, warehouses, you should get it a few dollars cheaper. So you'll make a little bit money there. And then, you know, you sell them on eBay for, uh, potentially over retail, which is about what all of the ETBs and all the new sets are selling is over retail. So that. Are the, those are the two ways so far. So another way would be um, buying cards and holding them. So for instance, you can buy graded slabs and just hold the slabs um, for you know in, uh, long periods of time. You know, usually a few months. Right now, um, right now you can probably hold a really good card such as a Charizard or a Lugia or something like that. You can probably hold it for a couple months and probably get increased value out of it. The longer you hold it, obviously, the, the more uh, money you're going to get out of it. So uh, with investing that way, you're going to want to buy uh, probably graded cards or buy cards and get them graded, uh, whichever one, and then hold on to them for a, uh, a decent period of time and wait for the market value to go up and then dump the cards whenever you want uh, the profit back out of them. And then uh, another way is going to be sealed products. So instead of buying um, PSA graded slabs, you can buy uh, sealed products. So like Vivid Voltage ETBs, Champion Path ETBs, uh, Shiny Star V, uh, the new set coming out, Shiny Fates. Uh, you can buy all of these things and hold on to them for a little bit and they may increase in price. Um, obviously, again, the longer you hold them, the more they are going to increase in price. And um, that's just how it goes, guys. Usually, if, if someone's wanting something out of that set, it's probably going to increase in price. You see Evolutions is going for like $400 a box right now, and that's just after a few years. Now, I'm not saying every set's like that. Obviously, it's not going to be. Every set is going to be like that. Uh, you know, Evolutions has the, the big boy Charizard in it, so everyone is chasing that set right now. So that is an extremely good set to hold on to. Um, I don't know how much higher that one can go. And again, at, at 400 bucks, you're only going to be able to get like one, one booster box out of that. So uh, you can get more booster boxes if you do like Vivid or something else like that. Um, and then uh, let's see. Another way is going to be probably one of my favorite ways. And that is buying raw cards and sending them in to get graded. Now I have shown you guys something like this before. So for instance, we'll go here and we'll go to, uh, sorry, my dog's trying to jump on my lap. Uh, we'll go Pokemon, uh, Lugia, uh, Unlimited, quick girl, Unlimited. And let's do a PSA. Well, let's not, not, not do PSA. So Pokemon Lugia Limited. Let's do Near Mint. And let's go. We need to do this. So this is our sold tab. So this will show us what they last sold for. This is our buy tab. This is what you want to buy them for. So these are going to be the ones that are on the market right now. So Pokemon Lugia. Let's see what else. Let's see what we have here. That's nine days. So you want to do, usually you want to do ending soonest because you're going to want to buy the, you know, one sooner than later so you have this this lugia right here ends in five hours which is a lot of time left nice little swirl that's an amazing swirl guys right there right below the mouth it looks like the swirl has some kind of elemental blast you know and it looks like it might be an elemental blast coming out of the lugia it's just a swirl i mean but that is an amazing swirl which is probably why this card is going for a little bit more this is a very very good condition card i would imagine this would probably it has a little nick here, some whitening down here. Um, let's check out the front again. I didn't see anything on the front. Might have some hollow scratches. Um, <clears throat> I don't see any hollow scratches or anything right now. It might have some. It's really hard to tell um, if they don't do it at an angle with the light. 
but as far as I can tell, this card looks pretty immaculate. I would easily probably say this is an eight, uh, probably good potential at a nine. So let's see, you got a $275 card right now. If I had to guess, this is probably going to end at like 350 ish. So let's look at um, a near mint. Now, I mean, near mint one that's sold. So let's see if we can find a near mint one that is sold. So here's one for 178, no swirl. Um, here's one for 355. So I imagine it's going to end up selling for roughly around 355. Again, 350. I think that's about what it is. So you can buy this card, um, and then you can turn around and let's let's just say it gets a PSA eight. So you buy the card for 350, send it in to get graded, and you're looking at 530, 495 dollars, 500, 600. So you bought it for 350, and then uh, after uh, you know four, five, six, seven months, however long it is for PSA to get back. Um, you could even send an express, but then you lose out on some of the profit. Um, and it is investment, generally investments you want to hold for a little bit of time or else it's not really investment. Then it's kind of just flipping if you don't really hold it. So for instance, you buy it for 350, you send it in to get graded six months is worth 530, uh, maybe even 600. And that's if it gets a PSA eight guys, I really think that one has a shot at a PSA nine and let's see what we're looking at for a PSA nine. See if we can find one. So that one's Japanese. I'm not sure why that one sold for so low. Um, that's PSA 8, PSA 8. Here you go. PSA 9, $1,500, guys. Same card. Not first edition. $1,500 is what it sold for. And that was just like a week and a half ago. So you buy this card, $275, probably going to end up being like a 350 maybe even a 375 because of that swirl. That swirl's definitely going to add some value. Um, you throw that swirl on top of this bad boy. This one, did, I don't even think this one has a swirl. So let's check this out. Yeah, this one doesn't even have a swirl. That swirl is definitely 110% going to add some kind of value. I don't know how much value it's going to add. You know, it could be $25, $50, $100. Um, it just depends. I mean, it's at, at a raw state, it's not going to add that much. Maybe $25 at the most in a raw state, I would think. Um, but at a graded state, a graded nine, this is card's already $1,500 with no swirl. I imagine it, it adds an extra $100. If, I, I would be shocked if it didn't add an extra $50 to $100. So that is another way, guys, that you can uh, invest in Pokemon cards. You can buy these raw cards, Lugias, Charizards. You really want the big hitters, Charmander, Squirtles, um, Jolteons, Vaporeons, Flareons, um, Tyranitars, uh, stuff like that, Typhlosions. You, 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 want, the, you want these cards that are, that are going to be valued. Even if the market goes down, people are still going to want these cards, and these cards are still probably going to slowly go up. Now, you did see a little bit of decline from the Charizards uh, once they hit that peak. They started going back down because the prices were getting crazy, crazy prices. Um, I think like I think I've seen um, some Charizards like base set unlimited going for insane amount of money, like over ten thousand dollars at one point, maybe even over fifteen thousand dollars. It was just insane prices and people didn't really know how many were on the market until people started making YouTube videos and stuff showing how many, just how many they had that were ungraded. So I think uh, once everyone realized how many are out there that are ungraded, uh, people started backing off a little bit and that that was what made the price drop a little bit. And then, you know, you had the Logan Paul, which, you know, boosted the prices of Pokemon cards infinitely. Uh, it's just an insane amount of boost that Logan Paul added to the Pokemon community. And so once that died down a little bit, some people left the scene of Pokemon. Um, it definitely dropped the prices of some of the cards. So, but I mean, there's still there's still cards that are going up in price. Like you see Lugia, it's just going up and up and up. And you see like the the first edition Shadowless Charizard still going up and up and up. Um, so you want to look for these cards that are going to hold value if you're just going to buy uh, cards for investment purposes. Um, if you're going to flip them, you can do really cheap cards. For instance, you can do like uh, Charmanders, Bulbasaur, Squirtles. You can get tons and tons and tons of these guys. So let's say like a Charmander. 
um, base set. We'll even do first edition because I know you can get. We'll even do yeah. We'll do first edition because you should be able to get several ba uh, Pokemon. Uh, should be able to get several uh, Charmanders first edition Charmanders for relatively cheap. So you know you got them. Now these are um, these are a little bit high, but you got one for eighteen bucks here, forty one dollars. These aren't even first edition, so that's actually pretty expensive. Uh, this one's Shadowless for seven. I don't know the condition. I'm not going to look at the condition of all these. I'm just giving you guys a rough, a very rough idea. This one is Shadowless for 37. No one's biting on it. I thought I put it on Ending Soonest. I did put it on Ending Soonest. I guess there, so there's just no first edition Charmanders. We'll just do a uh, Charmander base set. Um, see what else, see what's out there. So you know you have tons. Uh, you got a Charmander Squirrel here for five bucks. You got another Charmander and Charmeleon for eight bucks. You got the trio for forty. Um, Charmander, that's insane prices. You don't want to pay thirty dollars for one card. You have the whole tree, uh, the whole um, trio plus the Pikachu for twenty here. You have a Charmander for ninety nine cents here. Another Charmander, that's not the same one though. But this is what you're looking at, guys. The thirty thirty five. I mean, it doesn't have any bids, but um, that's what you're looking to do. You want to buy these Charmanders and hope that you can get some PS nine. PSA 9 and 10 Charmanders for 10 bucks. 10 bucks. There's a lot of five for 10 bucks. 12 bucks. Four bucks. Six bucks. All right, you're just going to have to go on here, guys. You're going to have to look at the condition of each and every card. You're going to have to judge as well as you can the, the, um, uh, what the card looks like on eBay. It's really hard to tell sometimes. I've bought numerous cards that said they were mint, pack fresh, ended up being total bust because they had like a dent in it or a, or a, a crease in it, what what have you. So you want to buy these cards for 5, 10, 15, 20 bucks. You know, then you go here and you do base set, Charmander, PSA 9. So let's see what we can find. So those aren't sold. Every once in a while, it'll take me off sold for some reason. You just got to go back and click it. Uh, let's see what we got here. So you have the whole four trio. Um, this one sold for five thousand dollars. These are first edition Shadowless, but you know, that's just an idea of what kind of price is. This one's first edition Shadowless for six ten. You can probably get this card raw for less than a hundred and fifty dollars. If I had to take a guess, um, you have the whole trio plus Pikachu. Uh, it looks like these are unlimited. So if you get all four of those at a PSA 9, which probably wouldn't be too crazy hard, you can probably get all four of these for easily under 50 to 100 bucks. Easily, guys. I'm telling you, you can probably get all of these for under 50 bucks. Turn right around, grade them, get PSA 9s. It's 10 bucks per card usually to get a card graded. It is a little bit slow. Like I said, it's going to be about six or seven months out uh, before you get your card back. But you can turn right around. It's just profit, 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 profit. I mean, it's just insane, guys. Um, even this one, like, if you buy this card for five bucks, send it in for ten bucks, and then you sell it for fifty-five, you just made you just made like forty bucks off one card. And you can buy a bunch of them, guys. Like, you can buy these cards for five, ten, fifteen bucks sometimes. Send them in, get graded. That's ten bucks, you know. And that's just PSA nine. So if you happen to stumble on a PSA ten. It just gets it gets even crazier. Like you know, you got nineteen hundred dollars for a first edition Shadowless. It's gonna be very hard to find that card in a PSA ten. That's why it's so much money. But I mean, it is definitely possible. The more first edition Shadowless, five thousand dollars if you get all four. Again, gonna be very very difficult to get that. But I mean, you got ninety one dollars for a BGS nine point five. You can probably get this card for ten fifteen bucks. Send it in. Uh, that's again first edition Shadowless. Here you go, base set unlimited, PSA 10, $324. I'm telling you guys, you can get this card for less than 50 bucks. You can find one on eBay. I assure you there's going to be a buy it now. Someone's going to be selling a pack fresh Charmander, buy it now for under 50 bucks. You can turn right around, sell that bad boy. I mean, uh, grade that bad boy. Hopefully it comes back at 10. I mean, if it even comes back at nine, you probably can still make a profit, but PSA 10, if it comes back, gets a 10, you're looking at like a $200 increase. Like there's no way that you can't get, you, know, you can't find a Charmander for a raw Charmander for less than a hundred. 
I you can definitely get a pack fresh Charmander for a hundred bucks. I'm telling you right now, and then hopefully it grades a PSA ten, and then you just made two hundred bucks off that Charmander, guys. I'm telling you, this is a very good way to invest in Pokemon. You buy these cards really cheap. Send them in to get graded, hold on to them for a little bit, sell them whenever you want to. Um, if you see the market dipping down a little bit, maybe you want to hold the cards a little bit longer, see if it goes back up. Uh, I don't think Pokemon's going to drop like exponentially um, anymore because I think it has a very good footing uh, in the ground for it to stay pretty stable from here on out. Um, it's not going to stay stable forever. Again, you know, you're the more. The more Charmanders that flood and flood and flood and flood the market, uh, you're going to need a lot of people wanting them uh, graded. So it is going to flood the market at some point. But right now, I think it would be okay. Even right now, if you sent cards in, I think seven months out, you're still going to be looking at profit. So I just wanted to share these few tips on you know how that you could spend your $600 if you wanted to invest it all in Pokemon. There's tons and tons of ways, guys. I'm just you know listing... The several that that I think are the best. I think this one is going to be the absolute most profit. Um, but I do think that if you do the rip and ships, that is going to be insane profit too. It's just how much you want to grind, guys. I mean, it, it's all a grinding game. Finding these cards on eBay is a grind. Doing rip and ships is a grind. You got to sit there on you know live Facebook or live Instagram for hours upon hours upon hours you got to find the product to sell for the rip and ships um i mean it's not easy guys but if you're definitely wanting to invest in pokemon again the best thing i can do is tell you to invest in yourself and this could just be even opening up a youtube so getting you like a camera set up uh you know you can get a mic a cam a couple cameras probably you get a mic a couple cameras probably a decent little laptop you don't need anything crazy for a pokemon stream you li you really just need uh something decent like i have a hundred dollar blue microphone i have two fifty dollar cameras so you're looking at two hundred dollars right there now i do have a very nice gaming setup that i have been using for uh playing video games which is a little bit different but you don't need that you really just need a a decent laptop you can probably get a decent laptop for 500 to a thousand dollars or maybe even like a decent little computer for about 750 to a thousand dollars now it is a little bit more than obviously the 600 dollars that they're giving you um but again this is just little things guys even if you just want to get a camera and make uh videos with your camera and then you know upload them to your phone make videos with your phone post the phone videos to youtube uh you know make instagram really popular TikToks is huge you can get a nice little uh, lighting setup you know some good cameras for 600 bucks and invest in yourself guys um, whatever you want to do just make sure that you are doing something that you enjoy that is the biggest thing is doing something that you enjoy if you don't enjoy doing it you're not going to make a huge profit doing it if you like doing ripping ships opening up packs for people um, seeing the reaction not really seeing the reactions but like you know in chat you can see the reactions so stuff like that, if you like to do stuff live where people can see you and you get to interact with people, that's always fun. If you want to do YouTube where you get to do it on your own time, like I do, that's always fun. Just do whatever you guys like the best. And I am going to uh, cut this video here in a minute. Um, we're already at 23 minutes, but I really hope this guy, I really hope this helps you guys uh, decide what you want to do with some of that money that you're getting um you know it is it's not free money i'm sure they're going to want something for it but as far as you know i mean it kind of is free money right now you're gonna to have to pay for it later somehow but if you invest in yourself you'll definitely be able to pay back whatever it is however it is they're going to want their money back um so again if you want to do this i highly recommend any of these options any of these options should be great options um I, I don't think any of these options are going to be bad options. I would be surprised if anyone said otherwise um, because all these options are relatively safe options, in my opinion. You just got to make sure that you're getting the right products. You got to make sure you're taking the time and doing your studying. Studying is very important. You got to make sure you're studying these cards, the prices, um, making sure that you don't... Uh, you don't buy a card like that Lugia, for instance. You don't want to buy that card expecting it to get a nine and then it gets a six. You really got to do your research on graded cards and what kind of condition you're sending in. 
because if you end up buying a $350 Lugia and you're expecting it to get an eight, but you don't know anything about car condition, it comes back and it gets a five. I mean, I don't know how much you're looking at, but you might have lost money. I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but there, there's definitely things like that. You definitely got to make sure that you are uh, doing your history, you're doing your research on these cards before you're investing money into it. Um, just be safe with your money, guys, and I hope all you guys have a happy New Year's, and I hope that you're able to do whatever you uh, enjoy, and I hope that this money is going to benefit you guys. Please don't go out and just blow it on something stupid. Don't just go out and just buy a bunch of packs to rip in and, and open for yourself. It, in the very least, make some YouTube videos. You never know. It could blow up into something. It could not blow up. You never know. Um, at least get a recording of it or something, and then at least attempt you know, to make some Instagram pictures, TikToks, YouTube videos, etc. Whatever you want to do, guys. But I really, again, I really hope this helps you guys uh, on your journey. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on my Instagram, my YouTube comments, Facebook, doesn't matter, guys. I am always willing to help you guys out and uh, uh, whatever questions that you might, guys might have. But again, thank you guys all so much for watching my video. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.